And away we go. It's your DFS early bird here from awesomeo.com. Dan Stratford, Dave Lockwood, along with you on this Monday morning. We have a nine-game NBA slate to discuss. Uh, Dave and I got our NFL venting out of the way before we started recording, so we'll dive right into the NBA. And uh, I'm happy, Dave, that we got a NBA, uh, 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 Anthony Davis late scratch early in the season. I mean, it feels like we're, we're getting our, our early season kinks out, and, and we were able to get – uh, an AD elbow sprain early on and, and get a late scratch from him. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm psyched about that. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, but also you, now you have late swap. You had time to, you had time to switch, right? Um, like it, it actually, it, it, wait, what, hold on. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Was it, what day was this? It was Friday. Okay, no, he got ruled no, out. Yeah, he was ruled out before. I, and sorry, late scratch. I don't, uh, I misusing the term there. It wasn't after okay. lock. But, okay, but he, uh, like you're leading up game, to lock. Yes. Being a game time decision. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I'm just saying I'm glad it was a seven o'clock game and we knew about it prior because that happens way too often that we don't. Um, unfortunately, now he's questionable. questionable. Yep. Heading into Monday with that sprained elbow. We know that uh, Elf is out. Alfred Payton is, is out with that right ankle sprain. Uh, Julius Randle, all of this same team, is expected to play. Darius Miller, doubtful. Not that that means much, but you know, a, a bunch of players from this New Orleans team are currently questionable, out, doubtful, probable. So uh, there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to the Pelicans. So I, I would definitely um, keep close watch on that. Now, outside of that game, there aren't that many notable injuries. Giannis is questionable with the head contusion. Uh, my guess is that he certainly plays. Um, there were concerns that he suffered the concussion, but I, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's possible that with someone as good and as integral to that team's success as Giannis, that he could miss this game. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, in the event that both of them are out, that means you have no Giannis, you have no Anthony Davis, two of the three players above 11K. Right. And quite frankly, uh, LeBron James at his price tag, you know, I might get some to disagree with this. You know, him being sandwiched in between Giannis and Davis on DraftKings, I actually think he's too expensive. He should be priced below both of them. Uh, so this could, you know, if we get some news relatively early, my guess is Davis is going to be another game-time decision, unfortunately, uh, in a game that doesn't start until 9 p.m. Eastern. That is the latest start time on the slate, which would mean, and it's the only 9 p.m. game, so you have no swaps available. Uh, that means that, uh, we could be walking into uh, hell on Monday night. Into a true Anthony Davis night. Uh, with uh, Even though there's late swap, no possible uh, pivot, as you say. If we were to get news late, if you take, you know, obviously the birds from a, a couple of different sites, it does seem as though it's a possibility he will miss more than a possibility he will play. Now, take that for what it's worth. That's why he's questionable, obviously, right? But uh Plan accordingly. <laughs> you know, do your best to, to do the research and figure out what lineup constructions you like. And if you have the ability to take on the added risk of him not playing, uh, if you're MMEing or whatever it might be, uh, there might be some advantage there because of, of the last game of the night being that one that he'd be playing in. Uh, lots to, to break down here. We'll go position by position. Don't forget, uh, tons of content over there at awesomeo.com. Also on our YouTube channel. Each and every day, there's an NBA uh, DFS strategy show. Uh, the deeper dive uh, on the bigger slates. And then you have live up uh, to lock typically with Eddie and either Spags uh, or Josh uh, getting ready for each and every slate right up to lock time. So lots from the live show perspective. And then you have the rankings, the projections, all those different things. If you want to use the promo code early bird, one word uh, that will get you one week free over at osmo.com. Uh, you can log in, sign up, get a week free. Uh, you do have to provide some information, but you can always cancel uh, before that kicks in. So again, promo code early bird, one word uh, over at awesomeo.com. We will go position by position, starting with point guard, of course. Uh, by do, the way, before we, before we do, sir? I want to just say something quickly. Um, on uh, linestarapp.com, it shows you like the optimal lineups from each week you know, for, for whatever, but for, for DraftKings main slate for football, uh, found this kind of interesting. I, I do it each week for the Sirius XM show at the end of each Sunday show. Uh, and every week, but this week, another cool thing is, um, has been 
within $500 of the 50K cap, which is just insane, like the optimal lineup of the week, the best possible scoring under that cap. This was 4,900 or 49,900. Um, oh, whoa. I thought this was 48.9. It changed since I last looked. Oh, wow. This was, this was another one, $100. Ready? Um, I just I found this very, very interesting. Uh, of the, what are there, 10 players, right? 10 total. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Of the nine total, <clears throat> six of them were below $5,000. Wow. Yeah. Marvin Jones, Sammy Watkins, Fitzgerald, Jack Doyle, Adrian Peterson, and the Bengals defense. Mahomes, Gurley, and Connor were the only above 7K. I know it's a basketball podcast, but looking back at that, it's like, would you have set a lineup with, you know, Jones, Watkins, Fitz, Doyle, Peterson, and the Bengals? Looking back outside of Doyle and Fitzgerald, you know, Jones and Watkins and, and Peterson don't sound that crazy, but it's funny to see a lineup like that come in $100 from the cap uh, and, 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 and do exactly what it did. Yeah, the uh, epitome of stars and scrubs there, getting it done. Yeah, with, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. A big Only difference. three stars, too. That's the crazy right. part. Well, that's it. Lineup construction's been tough uh, in the NFL and making those decisions of, of which sure position has. you're going cheap to. And, uh, you know, James Conner was somebody I was on a bunch. I didn't like Adrian Peterson at all. I know people were pointing at the Giants' defense, but here, here we are with Adrian Peterson, the age 33, breaking off a 60-yard touchdown run. <laughs> I don't know what league I'm watching, but um, but nonetheless, uh, it was a crazy week, week over week uh, in the NFL. Uh, I think it's going to get stranger as we get uh, more injuries, uh, some rookie quarterbacks or backup quarterbacks probably playing a, a bit more as well. Uh, so, so get ready for that. As we record, um, Red Sox up 5-1 now on the Dodgers. Steve Pierce hit a homer. Mm, um, ridiculous. Yeah, this is all absurd. What uh, do you think the odds on are, what do you think the odds were before the World Series started on him uh, winning MVP? Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't it's even possible, imagine. It's possible, right? I mean, I'm sure they were out there somewhere. I no, would... no, no. You think it's possible that he could win MVP? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think so at this point. Oh, they had know. to have been like a thousand to one. I think it's him. Ivaldi could be considered uh, for his role out of the bullpen. Yeah. Um, JD, maybe like as just the name, you know, the name and he hit a home run and potential clinching game. Um, and David Price has been obviously really good for them as well. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think Pierce is a legitimate chance here. Uh, if uh, all things, and I'm hoping they don't stay uh, the same here, but uh, 5 1 nonetheless. Um, uh, I was at a Halloween party on Friday night where uh, uh, a friend, uh, a, a husband of uh, one of my wife's friends, but a friend of mine, I was trying to sell that the uh, Red Sox are the underdogs in, in Major League Baseball this year, and they were underdogs in the World Series. And I was like, you won 100. <laughs> what are you talking about? And it's yeah. just the mentality that's still up here from before 2004. And I said, you spent $155 million on J.D. Martinez and David Price, two players, two mm -hmm. players. Don't stop. Just stop. So I had to walk away from the guy. But it was just... Yeah. Yeah, I made the, they're really good. I mean, they're, they're a very good, bad they're really good baseball team. But now that we've talked football and baseball, we can talk basketball uh, here with uh, Steph Curry is your most expensive point guard. Ben Simmons, Damian Lillard uh, goes uh, nine for Oladipo back above 8K. He's at 8,600 uh, against Portland. Then you get the likes of Lowry, Levine, Trey Young, Drew Holiday. I do have a couple of cheap guys here I want to bring up and ask if you think they are for real or not. But top end to start. Uh, what do you got uh, as some of your favorite plays at point guard? Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's interesting because the other day, a lot of us you know, in the industry were burned by that Chicago Atlanta game. I, I think it came in like I, I'm not I'm, I'm not just making things up. I think it came in around 50 points uh, below the over under below the total which is, that's a crazy number, you know, even in basketball, like that's just an insane number coming in 50 points below. Uh, it finished at, um, God, what, what was the final score on that? 97, 85. And I think the total was like 236 or something, just insane. Uh, and I think you're going to get that at times with the Chicago team and Atlanta quite often, you know, when, when it looks like they're in really good spots, because they're going to offer fantasy value this year. There's no doubt, but they're also just going to have some really bad team or games because they're going to be some really bad teams. And, you know, we know that bad teams can be great for, for fantasy, 
But then sometimes you're just going to get those games where nothing goes right, like nothing at all goes right. And, I mean, it's a Chicago team that ranks bottom five in defensive rating. Um, Atlanta ranks top seven right now, which is funny. I think they actually finished somewhere in the middle of the league because they do have Baysmore. Uh, Prince isn't bad. They're not the worst defensive unit. But, you know, I, I just wanted to point it out because the Hawks are playing at the league's fastest pace this season. Uh, and, yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, point guard, though, you know, Stephen Curry has been phenomenal. I, I generally don't like paying this much for him because, you know, the guy can drop, you know, 40 points and, you know, 55 fantasy points, which kind of isn't enough in this day's basketball. Uh, I'd rather just spend up to the Giannis or to the Anthony Davis, uh, assuming, you know, either of them play. But in general, that's kind of where I stand on these guys, uh, especially if Davis plays in this game against Denver where you have uh, no total right now for obvious reasons. But I can assure you it's going to be very high. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, the total in the Warriors games at 230. Again, I, I think there's a very solid play, but it's also a very good possibility that, that Curry doesn't play past the third. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not in the business of predicting blowouts. I say that all the time. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think you can look elsewhere. I, I actually, I, I like Ben Simmons in a bounce back spot here. You know, he is, he played. 32 minutes last game which is the lowest of the season not counting the the, the game where he, he left with an injury um this guy in close games and even in games where they they have a healthy lead is going to play 35 plus he played 38 34 43 against boston and that was not an overtime game um you know you, you have to like him here he, he's a bit expensive but he can give you that 60 plus, man. He's a triple double threat every time he steps on the court. Not a necessity at this price point, but I don't see how anyone gets in the way of him on this Atlanta team. I just don't. Uh, definitive uh, pace up game here. As I mentioned, the Hawks are playing at a league at a league high pace this season. Philly's at a top 10 pace, so it, there's still a pace boost for the Sixers. So uh, I, I definitely like that spot as well. Lowry has a tough spot. Milwaukee does a really good job of, of defending the perimeter, but uh, he's done a great job of getting the ball to Kawhi. I, I probably shy away here. He's been super consistent, which scares me a bit. So I don't think I'll go here. I, I actually have, well, we'll talk about all the depot at, at shooting guard. Sure. Uh, Trey young, the Sixers have been allowing a lot of you know, wide open three pointers, but with Trey young right now, maybe this isn't popular, I think Trey, now that his price has come up, I think it's a reasonable price point. But it's certainly he certainly is going to be one of these guys that that can really disappoint you this year and that can win you tournaments. He's a rookie point guard. These types of guys are going to have games where they just aren't there shooting wise. And he also plays on a team that at times will not be there shooting wise, which means that when he's shooting 0 for 6 from 3 and 3 for 12 from the field like he did last game and only racks up four rebounds, my guess is that his rebound oper or potential assi for assists, I meant, my guess is that his potential assists in that game were, um, were a lot higher than four, uh, that just no one was hitting shots. He's going to have those bad games, and uh, I, I think in tournaments he's fine. The Sixers are favored by, what, 11 in this game, though, uh, even though they haven't been blowing teams out. So I, I, don't really, I don't really worry too much about that. Those are the guys, I think, above 7K right now that I'm looking at if there's anyone else. There's guys that will definitely get to it at, at shooting guard. I guess, it would be, I guess it would be inappropriate for me not to mention Dame, right? I hate to mention everybody. I do. I really do. But – uh, Dame is, has just been insane lately. And, you know, even though his minutes aren't being staggered with, with C.J. McCollum as much as they have in the past, C.J. McCollum has taken the brunt of that, not Damian Lillard. Lillard's sporting a career-high 32.5% usage rate, assist rate above 31%. Cent, uh, percent. He's just jacking up a ridiculous amount of shots per game, Dan. And this game should be one of the most competitive games on the entire slate. So I know people generally don't like paying for him, but, man, it feels like one of those spots where he could once again just come in there and, and blow the roof off the place like he's done in each of his last two games of 41-plus points. Uh, there's his stat lines are just crazy to look at. If you go some uh, box score surfing, but, uh, 
especially what was it the 24 points in the second half of that one game where he was drawing yeah. with drawing oh, with yeah. a, a fan one of the best second half and fourth quarter players in the league for sh- hands just down. like the story of like the the fan yelling at him and saying oh i'm coming for them in the second half don't worry <laughs> just yep. goes out there and and that's what yep. we talk about a lot of the time with the narratives in the nba it's one of the few leagues where the ball gets in someone's hands they have the ability to shoot right away and they have the ability to, to affect the game that much more and not to say birthdays or, or you know, revenge matters, but uh, it is fun to see when a player of Dame's caliber can just start shooting and, and shoot at a high volume and at a high efficiency yep. uh, to have that sort of second half. I, I wanted to ask you about two guys who are actually sub 6K, so I don't want to ignore the, that sort of small sliver of Russell, Murray, Dragic, uh, Bledsoe, McCollum, anybody in there worthwhile, or or are you ready for a sub six k question here? Yeah, I, I think Darren Fox is just someone to monitor closely. Uh, he had a tough matchup against Mike Conley a few days back. Mike Conley's pick and roll defense is excellent, and Darren Fox has been operating heavily out of the pick and roll, top five in terms of usage this year, and he still you know put up really solid numbers. I like what I'm seeing from Fox. I tweeted a lot last year that I think that I thought he would develop into something really solid, uh, but probably uh, going away from him here just because this is another spot where I, I, I don't know if you're going to get the numbers and his minutes are a little bit strange, but at 66, I can't hate on him either. Now let's, let's just make this very clear. If, if Anthony Davis is out and Alfred Payton already is out. So that already helps true holiday. Like we've got to be considering Drew. There's just no doubt. He faced a tough Utah team that plays down in pace. Now he places a de- plays a Denver team uh, whose defense has been solid, but not one that, that you're super worried about just because volume is, is kind of everything, right? And I think you're going to get a lot of volume in this game uh, from, from Drew with Elf out, especially if we don't have Anthony Davis. Right. Uh, Pelicans, what, top five in pace to start the year. Um, one where you would have to at least consider Drew uh, Holiday. I, you know, I, I hate bringing the, these two names up, uh, mainly because I haven't tracked them as much. So I am doing a little bit of, of box score surfing here, trying to understand this early in the year, who to believe in, who not to, uh, where the flash in the pans are, and where the guys that maybe are undervalued or, or valued correctly, but are on the cheaper side of the spectrum. And two names, sub 6K here that one I completely discounted and one I haven't paid much attention to. Josh Hart at 5,400 for the Lakers uh, has drawn, I think, a couple of starts, if not one start at the two. Brandon Ingram returns today, though, so okay, that so. kind of is a wash, yeah. And uh, Derek Rose. And listen, whatever the hell is happening in Minnesota with, with uh, Jimmy Butler and Thibodeau and what this team is, Rose has had a really solid start to the year, um, obviously uh, aided at once by Butler being out. But even beyond that, at 5K, he's putting up 25 to 27 drafting points a game. Do you legitimately buy into Rose being viable in this 5K range, or is he even overpriced at this price point? Well, he depends on Wiggins, too, remember, because you know Butler's going to play more at the three when Wiggins is out, and then you'll get uh, a Koji at playing at the two, the but two. not playing. Uh, monster minutes uh, and then you, you look at how this game breaks down if you have Okoji playing 27 29 minutes uh, you have Butler playing uh, what 37 and then only 24 minutes in that last game uh, when they got blown out Carl Anthony Towns has just been embarrassing huh? uh, and then you have Teague as well who is pl- is like 31 30 then 22 minutes Rose is, is going to get minutes for sure with Wiggins out. I, I do think, however, that when Wiggins returns, uh, Rose's minutes are a little bit sketchier. Now, that's not to say that he can't put them up because when everyone was healthy, he still got some run. You know, 31, 32 minutes, then 23. It's really strange. Um, but above 5K, it's, it's a little bit tougher to pull the trigger. And I, I totally get why you mentioned him because he's facing this Lakers team. Um, Minnesota, dude, they're not a good team. Like, they, there's only a one-point spread, though, which, which says what Vegas and pretty much the public and everyone else thinks about the Lakers, too, right? 239 total. Yep. So it's, it's not crazy to consider Rose. But I, I'd like to think, and we haven't gotten through even one position yet, but I'd like to think that uh, there's better value than a $5,100 Rose because my guess is that his – you know, average output is going to be between 20, 
23 to 27, 26 fantasy points and, you know, not upwards of 35, 30 where you really want him. All right. Uh, any cheap options for you? Any guys that stand out or, or ones that at least uh, worth being in the player pool this early on? Yeah, I mean, Frank Nilakina is is still super cheap, depending on what's done with the lineup here. You know, he's he's gotten some starts at uh, the point. He started at small forward. If, if he starts at the point again, plays around 30 minutes, then uh, I don't hate him at all just because of how dirt cheap he is. He's not a good shooter, though, and his ceiling is really low unless he's, you know, getting dishing out some assist or, you know, make six of 11 shots like he did last start, but that's not something you expect. Um, I didn't mention Bledsoe uh, earlier. I know it's not value, Dan, but he's 6,100. And he's actually, you, know, you look at some of these performances, Bledsoe's got easy 40 plus fantasy point upside. So at, you know, 6,100, he's definitely in play. Aside from that though, there's not a lot. I would say though, kind of to your point, talking about Derek Rose, is that I would rather go with Jeff Teague at 200 additional dollars because I think he's a much more comfortable 30 plus minutes if Wiggins returns. He's only $200 more than Rose, yet he has, you know, one, two, two 38 plus fantasy point games, one above, another above 30. Like, yeah, he's going to have some rough starts, but he's also just more reliable with a higher ceiling than Rose. So give me Teague at the $200 increase for sure. All right, let's uh, make our way over. And again, uh, DK, with the MPE, we uh, have the ability to move some of these guys around and see where the best fit is from a roster construction perspective. You have a bunch of the small forward shooting guard eligible guys, and obviously point guard and shooting guard will mix and match here. Talk to Curry a little bit. You have Kawhi and DeMar DeRozan. Either of them focus on here at shooting guard or, or make our way to Victor Oladipo? Yeah, uh, we'll talk about We'll talk about Kawhi once we get to small forward, just so I can try and, you know, maintain some sanity with how everything is so wild. Um, dude, Jimmy Butler, though, is, is – look how cheap this guy is. 8,200, 239 total game, one-point spread. Wiggins might not play, but that doesn't really even matter. Uh, he's turned Carl Anthony Towns into – I can't even use the word. So, I, like – it, 8200 for Butler to me just seems way too cheap. Like I, in this spot, it seems way too cheap. And he hasn't faced easy matchups. He dropped 49 against Kawhi Leonard led defense in Toronto, right? Um, he, I'm saying he's got some easy matchups and he's produced in those easy matchups. Milwaukee wasn't an easy spot. Him and the entire team sucked. Um, but now you get the Lakers at home. Like, I just think Butler is in a really good spot. You know my thoughts on Oladipo. Um, when he's sub 8K, I'm going to pretty much target him all the time. He dropped below 8K. Every time he's been below 8K this year, we've had 45, or 42, 45, and 46. So you're not complaining about that. But now he's $400 north of Jimmy Butler. And that, to me is just a bit too much. The same goes for DeRozan. I prefer Butler over DeRozan. I, I, you know, I'll throw Kawhi in at shooting guard just because it's for the sake of the conversation. Um, I love Kawhi Leonard, but is his ceiling really higher than Jimmy Butler's? I don't think so. And Jimmy Butler is $1,400 cheaper than him on DraftKings. I just think Jimmy Butler is one of the uh, most reasonably and underpriced players. Not reason, but most underpriced players that we've spoken of thus far. All right, let's uh, make our way down to the Middletons, Richardson, Tim Hardaway Jr., who has uh, not passed up any shots to start the year for the New York Knicks uh, against the Brooklyn Nets here. Uh, you have Doncic down here, uh, and then you get into Levert and D'Angelo Russell, Gary Harris, basically all the Brooklyn and Denver players all uh, around the same price points. Some good names here that have some upside, obviously, from a usage perspective. Uh, Josh Richardson uh, almost being 7K is making my brain melt a little bit, but uh, here we are in the NBA season. Uh, what do you got from a sub 7K price point? You know, I the, I said this before the season started, Dan, and and I'm not going to change my opinion just because they're coached by Greg Popovich. This Spurs defense is not going to be good. Correct. Right, yep. right now, their defensive rating is worse than the Cavs and the Suns. It's dead last. It's dead last in the league. Like, yeah, to some extent, 
a little of that is negated by the fact that they play at the second slowest pace, but they're still not a good defense. This is it. It literally is not a roster that can defend the perimeter. It's not a roster that can, no matter how they mix and match, they can defend in transition. Uh, it's not a roster that can defend around the rim. The, I, I don't see how they're going to stop teams. I just don't see how they're going to slow teams down. Um, you know, and, and for that reason, I look at someone like Luka Doncic and I think, all right, well, uh, he's been really reliable thus far. He hasn't had that blow up game, but it's probably happening. Uh, and he didn't lose any minutes with the return of Harrison Barnes. Uh, when we, Harrison Barnes came back, played, they say he's going to play very limited minutes. He played 28. And I, I don't think Doncic is the one that loses those minutes when Barnes gets back up to 34 or 35. Uh, DraftKings has been swinging his p- uh, position from point guard to small mm-hmm. s- shooting guard, small forward, back to point guard, the shooting guard. It's stupid. He, he's not a point guard, so can we stop doing that? Position's loaded enough. Um, yes, low pace game. Yes, the, the total is going to scare some people away. 216, by the way, is like super low these days. But uh, at 6,600, I think he's a really solid play uh, for a lot of the same reasons I thought Oladipo was. And let's not forget, Dan, Oladipo in that game had 45 fantasy points, played 33 minutes, only shot 12 times yep. because the game wasn't competitive. So you say, well, well, we still played 33 minutes. Correct. But he also took a back seat for literally the entirety of the second half. He shot 12 times and still had 45 fantasy points. The Oladipo of that game's competitive is giving you, you know, whatever you get the point 12 12 shots for Oladipo a guy that's you know averaging 18 to 20 per game uh and then a guy in Doncic who is coming in isn't taking as many shots but he's averaging over 15 field goal attempts per game over 35 minutes a game um or sorry over almost 35 minutes a game with the rebounds uh, six per game with four assists with almost a steal per game. I expect that to go up. He's a, you know, a multi-tool player at 6,600 against the San Antonio Spurs team that most still see as this vaunted defense that literally ranks dead last through the first one plus weeks, almost two weeks. Pretty crazy. Uh, pretty is, crazy really to see. Uh, any other worthwhile plays here at shooting guard or ready to uh, truck on over to small forward? If you want to be different, Levine is you know putting up monster numbers pretty much whenever he plays and was one of the only few players in that Bulls talks game to put up solid numbers, 27 and 11. So I'm not against him, but I come back to the same argument as you know, I'd rather play Butler. Uh, depending on multi-position eligibility, you can you know kind of do whatever you please. Uh, value plays, though. I think Brogdon's fine, but but doesn't get me excited. You know, Holiday's going to play 35 minutes in a pace-up game, but that's really just one of those guys that you hope doesn't kill you. Uh, right now, I don't see any stupendous value. You know, Cameron Payne is still there. Uh, Chandler Hutchison is, is – yeah, he's still there, but I don't see any reason why you'd want to play someone like Chandler Hutchison. And the last guy I'll mention, uh, it doesn't feel good, but um, – you know, Marco Fultz, there, I'm telling you right now, there is going to be one of those games where Fultz uh, puts up like the 40 plus, right? He's 4,200. Uh, on the season, he's averaging 21 fantasy points. Is that good? No, it's, it, you're not stoked about that by any stretch. But at the same time, you're saying, all right, that's five times salary on average. Can Fultz give me 30, let's say 33 fantasy points? which is 7.9 times selling. He actually can. And they're double-digit favorites because they want to develop Markel Fultz. And, you, you know, look, I'm a big critic of his. I'm very disappointed of what we've seen from him this, thus far. But that game goes into a blowout. Do you think Markel Fultz is sitting? No, absolutely not. J.J. Redick is going back to the bench, meaning actually sitting down, not right. coming off the bench. And Markel Fultz is coming back out onto the court to run the offense to get more experience. He'll be next to Landry Shamit. Doesn't matter. Markel Fultz could get the biggest minutes of the season in this game. Um, and while it's a scary proposition, at 4,200, I actually don't think the risk is as great as other people do. And I also think people are terrified to play him because right now he's a first-round bust, a first-overall pick bust. 
Uh, Landry Shamit may be one of my favorite new names in the NBA. <laughs> He's a goofy looking dude too. You ever look at that guy's face? He looks like he's straight out of one of those. Um, like if you were to go back into the Mayan times and look at one of those statues, he looks like one of those, like a, like one of those well sculpted Mayan statues. It's it's seriously take a look at him. Next no, time. no, he has he has a five head. He doesn't have a forehead. He has a five head. Like that hairline is. Is that what it is? Yeah, that might be what it is. And think, you, you know what you're thinking of. You're thinking of the, and I know this story from, I remember from history class, they used to uh, put uh, hard rock, like heavy rocks on the foreheads of babies to actually force their uh, foreheads to be larger. Is that right? For whatever reason. I, I have to look up exactly why, but maybe I'm misquoting here, but like they would actually stretch out the foreheads and that's why you see sculptures that have the flatter Very head. interesting, yeah. And yeah. He, he looks like he has a five head, yeah. That it's, yeah, like what Aztec, Inca, yeah. Mayan, whatever, like all of the... Yeah. Yeah, that it's 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 very interesting. Um, yeah. I actually just shot you one on Slack so you can see exactly. I, I think you already understand. Yeah, yeah. My, 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 he, the Google machine has. Oh, yeah, has I mean, this is Easter Island. That's a, what that is. Uh, Easter. Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Easter Island. By the way, uh, there are like bunnies everywhere giving out chocolate, right? No. Um, <laughs> you want to see what I did there? Um, anyway, that 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 is the dad joke at. Uh, that's the daddiest of dad jokes ever. Finest. Uh, that's one my daughters can actually hear. So uh, there, there's that. Uh, small forward is next. The big don't, thing. Here, don't don't don't. You want them to love you, don't you? <laughs> my kids, dude. I have. Don't so, tell them that joke. No. So I have to. I have no problem uh, making fun of myself, as I'm sure everyone has been made aware on this podcast. I have an eight year old, a five year old, and a 15 month old. An eight year old to start taking violin, and uh, her, her third grade class, you can either take violin or the cello. And uh, some of her friends decide to take the cello. And so I said, you know, Nora, you should go into class and say to her friend Eli, as I say, just say, cello, Eli. Oh, no. <laughs> so she turns to me and she goes, Dad, that's one of the worst jokes I've ever heard in my life. Okay, at least you're raising her well. <laughs> she, she stared at me. I was like, come on, come on, Nora, that's brilliant. That's really funny. She goes, oh. she, but it continues. She goes, Dad, please, please never say that again. <laughs> Okay, good. She gets it. She just, she gets it. Uh, like, why does my she's like crying herself to sleep? Why does my dad not want me to have exactly, any friends? Exactly. Why is he trying to make me the worst possible person ever? Uh, anyway, uh, and she's right. That's an awful one. By the it's way. a terrible one. Uh, she's also a Yankee fan here in Massachusetts, so that's gonna go well for her over her life. Um, Better anyway, than the cello joke. <laughs> that's fair. Um, I'll have to come up with like a Jello reference, I guess. Then instead, uh, Giannis here. Uh, I guess the big thing uh, is that it's a, a head contusion, not a concussion. Uh, that they are saying he did not suffer a concussion is is huge in the fact that there's no concussion protocol. There's no uh, extra checks that are happening here. Obviously, to your point at the top of the show, they're going to be cautious with him uh, with uh, the amount he means to the team. They're not going to run him back out there if they think there are long term effects, but from a prognosis perspective, keeping concussion off the table is obviously a good step. Um, Here's my thing now. There was the report from Rotowire, uh, I think from like, I don't know, right? It's 11 p.m. right now, so it's like 12, 13 hours ago, that he blacked out after taking that elbow to the head. Like he said that he blacked out. So I don't know. He said, I don't remember much after that, but I got to be careful because I could have a concussion and stuff. <laughs> Might not be great. That's, yeah, that, that's reasonable to, to, to take into consideration. Um, if, if healthy, let's say that, uh, if healthy, 11.6 is more than a reasonable price for the numbers he's been putting up, right? So if you get an all clear, do you have any problem playing him here in this matchup with Kawhi? Do you have some reservations at 11.6? It's kind of, it, again, it, it, I come back to the same thing. Like, how do you game plan against Giannis? Like, do, it's not your traditional, he's not your traditional guy when it comes to guarding him. Like, uh, Kawhi is amazing. And, you know, if anyone's capable of at least trying to slow him down, um, then, then, then sure, it's Kawhi. But, dude, this is, this is still somebody that is, that is not normal he's he's just okay so let me see i'm trying to find the last time he faced Kawhi. um 
See, it's it's tough. I don't honestly. I don't even know if I, I'd have to look it up on Basketball Reference, and I don't want to do it on the fly. I'll find it for to to the article. I'll find it for Monday's article. Um, but I'd like to see if he has any like games in recent memory. You know, not back 2014 or 15 when he was still like really developing against Ka- because at that point they might not have even stuck Kawhi on him. Uh, I don't think you have to play him here, uh, and I'm almost hoping he doesn't play so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm I'm hoping that we get Anthony Davis to play, uh, and then you know we just do that. The thing that sucks though is like Anthony Davis. You know we've always you hear about like the bigs playing in the Denver altitude. Uh, that's another thing. I can't remember if he's one of them that that sucks against them uh, in the. Like, I think it's still the Pepsi Center, um, but that that's another thing. So I, I'm just throwing everything out there, you know. Um, Let's see, career at eight games, eight, uh, 20 points, eight rebounds, two blocks. I don't know. Again, something I'll look more into uh, later on. But I don't think either – I don't think Giannis or Davis are in optimal spots. But I think if healthy, Davis is in the better spot. It's just both of them have those intangibles. So, yeah, I mean, if Giannis plays, it's not like you're, you're, you're going to be worried about it. And I think, honestly, that you're not playing them in cash, but in tournaments – because everyone says, oh, Kawhi Leonard, because everyone says, oh, he was questionable, this and that. Then he just becomes that much more appealing because there really isn't any single player that's capable of stopping him. Right. That makes sense. Uh, what about uh, the top end of small forward a, a position? I feel like we have a lot more depth, and maybe it's just because of the offensive explosion at every position. I feel like there, there's more talent and not necessarily the barren wasteland we've seen in the past. I also have not been playing on FanDuel much to start the year, so I can't say what the situation is on that site. Uh, but on DK, I feel like there's at least a bit at each that you can get behind and feel fairly comfortable with. Uh, what, what do you think of small forward on this late? All right, yeah, Chris Middleton's still here, right? Is he? Yeah, Chris Middleton's still uh, eligible at, at at small forward. And the reason I mention this is because let's not forget if Giannis doesn't play, well, that changes a lot, right? Uh, Middleton, since the start of last year, has a thirty one percent usage rate with Giannis off the court. Averages you know one point two fantasy points per minute. You think that'd be a little bit better, but still. Uh, it's not terrible, and he's sub 7K. Uh, Eric Bledsoe is another one of those guys that if he's off the court, uh, his usage rate is is going to be close to 30%. His per-minute production goes up. His uh, facilitating goes up to around 30%. So remember, Giannis, it's not just do we play him if he plays. It's if he doesn't play, um, who the hell else is, is, is going to be, to be viable? And the answer is, like, everybody. Now, I also tweeted the other day that Giannis opens up shots for everyone. Brooke Lopez, Bledsoe, and Brogdon all um, are top 10 in the league in when you sort three-pointers by range of defender and you sort by wide open, which is six-plus feet. All three of them are in the top 10. And the only reason or explanation for that is because everyone is worried about Giannis, right? I don't think there's anyone that, w- that knows basketball that would argue that fact. So if Giannis is in fact out is it going to take away more open shots yeah but are we really worried about that probably not so just something to keep in mind middleton would become a very good play Doncic here i already mentioned him butler's at small forward and there's a lot here to like uh i i think i don't i don't like playing dario but he is pretty cheap you know him and covington are both cheap you know i don't i'm not big on that um the, the one guy I did want to throw out there, Torian Prince, I just really like what I'm seeing from him this year. He's going to have some bad games, like I've said with everyone on this team. But you know, Torian Prince, I think he has a pretty high floor right now just because of the monster minutes. He's jacked up uh, 15 shots in all but one game. In the game that he didn't, it was 14 shots. Um, he, he can produce points. You know, he can gra- rack up steals. He'll give you five to se- or four to seven rebounds, a handful of assists. Uh, in this game, you know, if you're playing a few Sixers, Torian Prince is, is a nice way to, to run it back there as well. Yeah, and obviously with uh, the pace in that game and the over-under, he seems more than adequately priced, uh, sub-7K, uh, depending on how you piece it together. What about, uh, we haven't talked much about the Knicks-Nets game, and I not to be a homer here, but 
is there a Lavert or a, you know a Tim Hardaway Jr. Anybody that in this contest you think from point guard on through small forward is worthwhile, or do you just think this is a crap game that uh, could be a little bit of a mess? No, I mean I'm glad you brought it up. I'm a fan of of Karis Lavert. It's kind of, and and I it's just one of those games where I feel like it could get lost in the mix and then end up just being a disaster because these are two really bad teams. But Laverne has a, a, a very hefty usage rate this season. It's at 27%, which is nice. Um, if you sort it, let's, let's just do this real quick. We'll just sort by team since it's early in the year. Um, by the way, the Red Sox are currently two outs away from winning the World Series. With Chris Sale on the mound to close it out. That's another one where like... Kind of Kim, awesome. Kim, I know, but Kimbrell... <laughs> He's a good closer. Like, he, oh, I know. Uh, right, I, I know. It's just, it's, it's weird. It's you're up weird four. You're up four. Like, yeah, you're yeah, close, close, like, close the do. game out. Like, yeah. But then I guess you had to think Chris Sale's also like one of the best in the world. Right. Oh, sure, uh, absolutely. But uh, Lavert leads the team in usage, twenty-seven point three percent. We know that when it comes to the minutes, right? It's always, it's been a little, it's been a little weird in Brooklyn since uh, Kenny Atkinson took over. But Karis LeVert also leads the team in minutes, is the only player on this team averaging over 30 minutes, 31.2 minutes per game. So for all of those reasons, take usage um, and, and, and minutes into consideration here, he would be the guy that I think gives you the highest floor uh, and also the highest ceiling. But um, I don't think Jarrett Allen's a crazy play. Um, not really an offensive juggernaut, but I'm not worried about. Uh, I'm not worried really about Ennis Cantor. Uh, I, I, yeah, so so you could go here. I'm not going to go Russell. The positions just deep enough. Um, and and mind you, Allen, you're not getting usage from him. It's more so right. whatever. We'll get to that later. Uh, but then with the Knicks, I think if if I asked you, I think you probably know who has the highest usage rate for the Knicks. It's, it has to be Tim Hardaway Jr., right? Oh, it's got, I haven't even looked, but yeah. It's, it has he, to be over 30%. Right, he, yeah, he's at 30%, yeah. um, which depending on site, it changed a little bit. Basketball reference is a little higher than NBA.com. Uh, 30%, you know, I think it's, a good, it's fair to point out definitely that, that Tim Hardaway here is, is a very viable play. Uh, after that, though, you know, because you start talking about price points, Levert's not that expensive. Uh, Hardaway sub 7K as well. So when you get a guy that's literally jacking up 20 plus shots in all but one game this season, and that's because he played 23 minutes in a blowout. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely okay with that. But when you start seeing the price hikes of some of these other guys, um, <clears throat> like Dotson and such, and even though he's, he's not been bad, then, then I start to get a little bit worried. So and that's, Hardaway would be the guy. Dotson's the guy that I feel like is, is the trap this time around at 4,800. People have gotten away with playing him a couple of times in a row as his price point has come that. up. Uh, so he's somebody I'll stay away from and probably have some Tim Hardaway Jr. in, in my lineup where he can go four for 20 uh, with the 0 for 8 from three-point range for me, but that's fine. Um, yep. Let's Just uh, remember Jimmy Butler at 82 is still a really good play, and Doncic in cash is a better play, obviously, than Levert and Hardaway, but those two guys have a lot of warrant a lot of tournament consideration because they're not going to be nearly as popular. What do you got? Any cheap guys are ready for uh, power forward? Not, not a ton of value there right here, right now. Uh, things could change. We'll wait on Giannis for sure. Um, I also think this is one of those slates where, you know, if Giannis and Davis happen to sit, even if one of them doesn't, I still think we could get really nice balanced lineups into our lineup or into a really nice balance into our lineup. Now, uh, word placement matters sometimes in sentences. It's sometimes fine. it does. Um, commas are really important too. Uh, power forward up next. Uh, we talked to Giannis. You talked about LeBron. You talked about Anthony Davis at the top. Uh, can re litigate them here, uh, but also have Durant, Aldridge, Miritich, you've touched on already. And then you get Draymond and, and on from there. Some injuries uh, to uh, Randall, uh, question marks uh, to, to Davis. And of course, Giannis at the top. A, a, Position that has a stark drop off from your top four down to Aldridge, and then already down to to the six K range. Before we get to even scroll on DraftKings, uh, what are some of your favorites here? Uh, yeah, so if Giannis is out, right, Ersan Ilyasova is someone that we're definitely considering. We you, you pretty much have to. I mean, he's already been pretty solid. Um, 
he's he's already been solid in with with Giannis healthy this year, but I think he would definitely inherit uh, a decent chunk of minutes. Again, I'll have to look into it, see how many minutes he's played without Giannis this year. It's like it's his eighth time back in the Bucks. It feels like um, Jabari Parker is probably going to pop in a lot of projections, but man. I just been bitten by the by I've bought into him so many times and it's like he burns me each time. Uh, last game he was solid. He was popular against Charlotte. He was he was trash. Um, I mean, fifty eight hundred. There it is. World Series champions struck both of them out. That's what Chris Sale does. And like ten or eight pitches. No, I think I know. Uh, Jabari though, here's the thing. He's attended thirty shots over his last two games, right? And we know that Bobby Portis is still out. So, yeah, Jabari Parker still has to be in play, whether you want to or not. He, he, the blowout against Charlotte uh, it gives you an indication because he played the next game. They won by 12, and he played 34 minutes. If you're getting that from Jabari at his price point, then he's undoubtedly going to be one of the best plays uh, on the board from a point-per-dollar standpoint, whether you like it or not. So, you know, just kind of think of it that way. Um, and and I, and I think that, you know, this game is probably not going to stay close. So uh, you can you can take your chances, but you know that's that's definitely an issue. Um, another one here, Dan. Uh, you're looking at power forward center, but we got to move around a little bit. Kelly Olynyk is interesting, and I think people might bite. But what's interesting about this is there are a lot of bigs on the Sacramento team. This. Uh, feels a whole lot more like a white side spot than it does Kelly Olenek. I mean, Kelly Olenek can still, you know, get it done. And interestingly, they're still playing like Olenek played 30 and 29 minutes over his last two games. Whiteside played um, 27 and 34. So it's not like he's just backing Whiteside up exclusively. Uh, so that, that, that's what interests me in somebody like Olenek because, you know, we know that, the Kings are playing at the second fastest pace and they have a bottom 10 defensive rating. I expect both of that to remain the same. So I think there's good value here. I think Jabari Parker is interesting, but in terms of like mid range and, and those guys, there's nobody I'm in love with. Like I'm not in love with LaMarcus Aldridge at almost nine K uh, Kevin Durant was probably going to be a blowout. It's tough. LeBron at Minnesota. Look, it, everyone's back. Ingram's back. Like, could he just take over and dominate? Yeah, which is why he's always in play in tournaments. But paying that much for LeBron kind of kind of hurts when he's been pretty happy to defer. It's uh, a position as we scroll through that uh, I I did not see being uh, as sketchy as it is, but not a lot not going bad, on yeah. uh, that uh, necessarily will jump out at you. Maybe uh, last man in here at at uh, power forward, or if you can find the right center that is also power forward eligible. Uh, that you liked enough that could help. Rudy uh, Gay could be all right, you know, if he gets the thirty-three minutes. He start. Uh, he he started the second half. Davis Burton started the first, and then played like nine minutes. And then Rudy Gay played. Th- started the second half, played thirty-three minutes, and Burton's played like four minutes in the second half. So, uh, yeah, that that's that. Yeah. That experiment failed. Two two blocks from Rudy Gay. Youthful, getting up there and getting yeah, some block shots. Uh, so center, let's close it out there. You obviously have Embiid and Jokic at the top at uh, 10K. I'm skipping over Anthony Davis a little bit just because of uh, discussions already around him. Um, LMA, then you get into centers only. Towns, Whiteside, Cantor, DeAndre Jordan, uh, and then we move along. Embiid here against Atlanta is, if you want to, go for it. Uh, if you don't mind potential blowout and uh, maybe him sitting much, or, or do you think this is a uh, – a not optimal matchup for Joel Embiid. I mean, it's optimal from a matchup standpoint. Uh, it, my Lord, has he been dominant or what? Like, it, it, look, you know, you don't want to be the, the dude that just looks at the box score, but we are or like at his game lines, but we already know how good he is. Um, would you like, Dan, he's averaging 36 minutes per game. He, yep. he, he he's, He's averaging right around 30 points and 13 rebounds and two, two and a half blocks. Like this dude's production is insane. I actually think 
if you're pricing LeBron at 11-4, right? Forget about skill. Let's talk about floor, ceiling, expected average production. You're pricing LeBron there. Uh, you're pricing Kevin Durant at 10-4. Okay, sounds pretty reasonable, but ton of 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 mouths to feed there. And then you're you're pricing Embiid at 10,000. Well, just take if look at the fantasy points on this. He he's averaging well. We won't, we'll exclude Giannis because of the injury and such, but Embiid's averaging the second most fantasy points per game of anybody on this slate. And you have Davis, LeBron, Dame, Curry, Durant, Jokic, Simmons. That like, uh, so I don't like 10K for Embiid is not too much against Atlanta. If this game stays even remotely close and he gets his 36, 37 minutes, it's really hard to see him failing because he's that good. It's uh, as you look through it, it's just been a dominant start to the season for him. And uh, even in a blowout seems to have a gigantic upside here uh, in three quarters, right? Like if you believe in the blowout, you believe in, in, in 27 minutes, 25, like the, the upside is still gigantic. Do you uh, remember it, we were playing him at like 88, 9K yep. when he was limited to 26 minutes or so? I mean, yep, it, it was him and, uh, I mean, before, when Whiteside. Whiteside, yeah. Yeah, when Whiteside was picking that up the triple doubles. That was just because hated him. <laughs> Still does. Um, yeah. Has, uh, yeah, picking up triple doubles in like 19 minutes of play. Um, Crazy. But uh, I do have one name I want to go back to for shooting guard, and I'll try to keep it in the back of my brain. I'll write myself sure. uh, uh, an IM here to remember it, to not give it away. I want to build the suspense. Uh, but uh, better be good. Be, and it's not really uh, beyond uh, Embiid. Uh, you do have Cantor against the Nets. I know uh, Jared Allen's been better on the block shots this year. He said he's been studying a lot of his opponent's tendencies and trying to focus on blocking more shots. Uh, don't know how great his rim protection numbers or the Nets rim protection numbers overall are. Uh, but uh, Cantor has been an offense force, but came off the bench against the Golden State Warriors and wasn't happy about it uh, with a Robinson starting for the Knicks. Um, what names? What, who do you like beyond Embiid? What are some of the guys that uh, seem to jump out at least a little bit as part of your player pool here uh, to start Monday morning? Yeah, I mentioned this in a the deep dive on Friday. I don't know if you meant to say Nets or Knicks, but um, I meant to but, say uh, Cantor against the Nets. What the Nets okay. protection numbers are? Yeah, the Nets have the best rim protection numbers in the league right now. There which you have is it. Okay, kind of crazy. And then another thing. Because this is, uh, you know, I was looking up like Anthony Davis stuff, and, and look, that that it doesn't mean so much. It's early in the year, but Jared Allen actually has been really impressive defensively. If you just look at a small sample from this season, um, another thing that that stood out to me was that the the Nets. I'm pulling it up. I just want to make sure that that this is still similar to what it was because things can change quickly. Here we go. The Nets have been blocked against um, one of the. Actually, no. See, it was second least, and now it's 13th. So that, that can change quick again. Uh, but anyway, no, I think Cantor's a, a fine play. But I am kind of on alert when it comes to Jared Allen's defense. Like, I'm paying very close attention to that. So I don't think this is as much of the gimme matchup uh, as it was last year or the year before that. Uh, we'll do some more research. We'll get a, a, a bit of a, a larger sample, and we'll see. But I, I'm very interested to see what Jared Allen's uh, like defense defense pans out. You know, after the first month of play, to me that's going to be really interesting to see. He's got a solid defensive rating, but as we both know, uh, that doesn't tell you uh, much, most or even half of the story. So we mentioned Embiid, uh, Jokic, man, especially if Davis is out, like Jokic becomes even more of a compelling play, and. I wish I could be like, hey, Carl Anthony Towns is, is in a great spot. He has squandered almost every quality opportunity he's had. So why can I trust him now? I, why trust him now? I, he, you'd be like, oh, well, he's good. 33, 46, 40, 32, 32. Yeah, that's, that's not what you want at 84. In 2018, if you're paying 8,400 and, and you're hoping for 45, not settling, because sometimes we'll settle with it. You're hoping for that? You're crazy, man. Like, there's just, you can't do it right now until something changes. I, even without Wiggins, like, even without Butler, the, the game, like, Carl Anthony Towns is, is still not able to get the job done. And that bothers me. Hell, I'd rather, rather play JaVale McGee. Yes, yeah, price tags come up, but I'd rather play him against the marshmallow known as Carl Anthony Towns. 
And I, I'm, I'd feel more comfortable doing that. And uh, as I expected, Luke Walton has not hesitated to play in big minutes against bigger lineups. Yep. Um, oddly, he played 28 against San Antonio, then 24 against San Antonio. Did that one game go to OT? I think it may have. Um, I, I, I don't, think it did the first San Antonio game, yeah, I feel like, I was. It did, right? Yeah, it was an OT game. 143, 142. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but like Denver, you're up against Jokic, the dominant. So uh, Phoenix, DeAndre Ayton, uh, San Antonio with overtime, but the front court's kind of weird. Uh, I think JaVale McGee could see another 28, 29, maybe 30 minutes here if Cat stays on the court. So I really don't think it's crazy to consider him. He's not a he's not a lock by any stretch. And, and another reason for that is, again, I think it beads a really good play. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr. is still too cheap on DraftKings. He just posted his first career double-double. And as I mentioned, when you get double-doubles from Carter, they're going to be 10-10. They're going to be 10-11, 11-12. Like, you're not going to get monster double-doubles from him, but you don't need that at this price. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is that now Wendell Carter Jr., uh, since Chris, uh, Cristiano Felicio got healthy, they're – kind of splitting minutes and that sucks and that worries me about carter jr uh because before he was playing like he was getting upwards of 30 plus right so uh i'd rather Ilyasova if 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 Giannis is out i even think olenic might be a higher upside play uh and of course if Giannis is out brooke lopez is also going to see higher volume if 4200 uh he'd be close to a lock uh, Yusuf Nurkic is always a great value play because we know not value, but tournament play at 6,400 because his point per dollar upside is just massive uh, in comparison to that price point. So I think that's where I'm at. And then I, again, I, I think that a guy like Whiteside, because there are a lot of, you know, six eleven, seven footer, seven one guys in the Sacramento front court, this does seem like one of those spots where Whiteside gets the, the big run and, you know, has the upside to give you 50 plus here. Uh, the uh, want to close out uh, the pod, obviously uh, great stuff here. Always find Dave's writing uh, over at Osmo.com. Uh, the deep dive Monday, Wednesday, Friday from Dave. And then uh, Adam has you Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, most weeks. Uh, some things can change obviously with the, the slate and depending on uh, other schedules that come up. So always check in there. Uh, as I said at the top, use the promo code early bird to get a free week. Uh, over at awesomeo.com to check out the rankings, the projections, the grades, uh, and the variety of content that's behind the paywall, and then the live shows that are over there on YouTube uh, throughout the day, starting in the morning with the NBA Strategy Show, and then you get uh, NHL sprinkled in, uh, the NBA Deeper Dive, and then live up until lock. So the wait, wait, but where can they follow me, Dan? Well, I haven't got. I'm not at the end of the podcast. I have a question <laughs> about a player. I know. Um, I know. Uh, they can follow you to the ends of of the earth, Bobby. Oh, um, I like it. Uh, Clay Thompson uh, down to 5,600 uh, on DraftKings. And just more a question about that team. And uh, he's what the third or fourth option. We know that. We know minutes can be scattered as they blow other teams out. Is there a price point for someone like Clay or Draymond as the third and fourth options that you think is worthy of, of fire no matter what? Or, or is Thompson just somebody that uh, needs to be in the right situation? with injuries to really crack uh, your DFS lineups. We'll do a quick, quick breakdown. Um, one, he, he's definitely the third option, right? It's, it's not Dre. Right. But what differentiates them is that Draymond green uh, might not take 15 plus shots a game. Uh, and he hasn't exactly been uh, wildly impressive either this season. Uh, but Draymond green is capable of salvaging with, you know, triple double type numbers, block steals, you know, contributing, in all six categories or i'm sorry all five categories yeah uh well actually six when you consider the personal fouls and he's turned the ball over a lot too so seven i guess but with clay you know he is definitely the third option he's still his shot attempts are still 29 16 14 17 8 like that's a lot of shots so i don't think you're wrong in saying all right if this guy's taking close to 20 shots a game is it and, and and his three-point attempts, I'd have to look, but it seems like his three-point attempts have to be down a little bit from last season. Uh, per game, three-pointers this year is at five. No, wait. Uh, yes, it's down by two full three-pointers per game. And two years ago, he's attempting eight and a half. Now 5.2. That's weird to me. Uh, a little bit disconcerting as well. Uh, but 
he does. Yeah. He, he 5,600, he can give you decent numbers. And the second part just in this Clay Thompson breakdown is that the way Steve Kerr's rotation works or that in blowouts, Clay Thompson actually, you know, is, is kind of starts the fourth quarter anyway, regardless of score. Um, so he'll play several minutes into the fourth, regardless of how bad they're beating an opposing team. Uh, and that helps them for two reasons. One, he's getting the minutes and, and two, his usage increases because Curry and Durant are likely off the court. So there are benefits there, but there's also the huge downside that when Clay Thompson isn't scoring 25 to 30 real points, um, you're getting, you're basically getting from Clay whatever he scores plus five. If that makes sense. Right. Word. Now that makes sense. And uh, just somebody I wanted to highlight at that price point uh, as we got through this nine game slate. As always, you can find Dave on Twitter at Lofty underscore D, L O U G H Y underscore D. Find me at Dan Stravern and it's uh, awesome underscore com, I believe. I need to check that out and make sure. Correct. It's correct. And I know the other, uh, the fan vice handle is still out there now as awesome odds, I believe. Uh, <laughs> retweeting some random things from time to time but um nonetheless uh you can always find us uh, monday wednesday friday here on the podcast you get emac and adam tuesday thursday and saturday uh and as i said tons of uh, live content over there on youtube on the awesome stream so stay tuned for all of that throughout the day on monday we wish you the best of luck as always and we'll check you back here on the dfs early bird <laughs>